our presentation on equine arthritis. I am Lucy and I'm one of the vets at Cliff Equine. Um, just a little bit of insight into why we're giving this talk. Um, so at Cliff, we undertake many full orthopaedic examinations, either at the clinic or at our clients' yards. Um, unfortunately, like many vets at many practices, we find that osteoarthritis is a very common cause of reduced performance in horses. Um, as a result of that, um, we really hope that this talk will provide you with some insight into this common and complicated disease, alongside giving some information with regards to its treatment options, of which there are a multitude. Um, joining me this evening is the wonderful Juliet Abbott from Bury Ingelheim. Um, I will now pass over to her without further ado, um, so that she can introduce herself and get started with our presentation. Thank you, Lucy. Wow, well, what an introduction. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks so much for, for joining us, as, as Lucy said. So, as Lucy said, I'm, I'm Juliet and I work for Boeing at Ingelheim Animal Health and, and we're one of the um, pharmaceutical providers um, to Cliff Equine. Uh, we do a, a number of human pharmaceutical products, but also veterinary medicine and, and supplements for, an, for all animals. Um, but the team and I, uh, we're sort of focused solely on improving the, the health of horses. You might be familiar with some of the other work that we do. So care about Cushing's, talk about laminitis and also stamping on flu, as well as some of the other um, elements that you may have heard of. So just to let you know that this webinar is being recorded, which you probably heard when you joined. So um, if that's something that you um, aren't happy with, then um, we'd ask you to, to leave the webinar. Um, in terms of your questions, we have a Q&A function. So I would ask you to use the Q&A box, which you will see um, along your uh, screen, rather than the chat function. So what we'll do is after the presentation, we'll um, have a, a good Q&A session. Um, depending on how many questions we get, uh, we might find that we do sort of start to, to run out of time. So anything that isn't answered directly by Lucy and myself this evening, then we would just ask you to, to contact Cliff Equine directly um, with any further questions. So without further ado, let's um, come on to, to look at what we're going to talk about this evening. So we're going to talk about what is um, equine arthritis and what steps can we take to prevent and manage um, arthritis in horses. And also importantly, how we treat that arthritis right at the core um, using stem cell therapy. Now, stem cell treatment is a really exciting new option for treating arthritis and research and, and available products has leapt forward in the last couple of years. And these treatments can be um, discussed with your vet to determine if they're appropriate for your horse's condition. So to kick things off and to, to give me an idea, really, of, of who we have with us tonight, um, I've got a very quick question, which I'm just going to, to launch as a, as a poll, which you should be able to see on your screen now. So it's just whether your horse has arthritis and, and if you've got, you know, experience of, of horses um, with arthritis. So we'll just give you a moment to, to answer that. Wait for the numbers to stop. Okay, a couple more seconds and I'll close the poll. Okay, thank you to everybody that, um, that answered that poll for me. So as we would expect, you know, you're here this evening because you do have um, an interest in the topic of arthritis. So 63% of you um, have a horse that, that has arthritis and then um, a small number, so just 12% of you don't. A few of you joining us that don't have a horse, that's great. So um, thanks ever so much for, for doing the, the poll there. Okay. So um, I'm going to, to play a, a short video to you now, which just really gives a nice introduction um, about arthritis in horses.
At some point in their life, many horses will suffer from lameness. Up to 60% of these horses will be diagnosed with degenerative joint disease, a progressive disease affecting one or multiple joints in horses of all ages and breeds. Degenerative joint disease is often preceded by synovitis, an inflammation of the joint, leading to the production of abnormal joint fluid with reduced viscosity and clarity. This can sometimes be palpated as joint swelling. The abnormal joint fluid contains inflammatory cells, cytokines, degradative enzymes and free radicals, all of which drive the vicious cycle of the inflammatory cascade. If the horse is not treated at this early stage, the inflammatory factors cause degradation of the cartilage matrix components, like hyaluronic acid and collagen. Inflammation also causes damage and death of chondrocytes, the functional cells in the joint cartilage. This leads over time to the formation of lesions and degeneration of the joint cartilage. So as we saw in, in the video, equine arthritis is the degeneration of the joint. And you can see from this image that the joint is made up of multiple structures. So the, um, you've got the ends of the, the bone that, that form the joint. You've then got the smooth layer of cartilage that covers the end of the bones to allow almost this frictionless movement. And then you've got the joint capsule, which is surrounding the joint there. There are also multiple ligaments that provide the joint with stability to make sure that it doesn't overstretch. So with arthritis, these structures become damaged and worsen over time. Now, any joint can be affected by arthritis, but in particular, the knee, the fetlock, the coffin and the hock joints in horses. And it's very similar to um, arthritis in, in people um, and causes very similar symptoms. So it causes pain and it prevents the joint from being able to move freely. So I'm just going to hand over to, to Lucy now to, to talk us through um, what you as clients might actually notice and also what Lucy as a vet might pick up on and start making her suspicious of arthritis. Over to you, Lucy. Absolutely, thank you. Um, so when we think of arthritis in horses, we are often immediately drawn to thinking about lameness, and that's certainly not incorrect. Um, the two often do go hand in hand. And as Juliet said, and in the video, um, some studies do suggest that around 60% of equine lamenesses can be attributed to osteoarthritis. However, it is very important to know that in a number of cases, those symptoms will often be much more subtle um, and can include anything from simply altered behaviour um, to an intolerance and, or avoidance to work even, um, generalised stiffness, um, or what many people often notice is their horse suddenly starts to be reluctant to lie down or roll in the field. We may suddenly see um, some joint swelling um, and that can also be in the absence of lameness, um, so it can be an earlier symptom of arthritis. Um, so when you're also talking to your vet, but also another person to touch base with if you are concerned about arthritis would be your farrier, as they often may notice that the horse is struggling to lift or a limb or stand on a certain leg, which you may yourself notice as well when picking out their feet. Um, but they can also notice if they're unevenly wearing down their hoof wall or their shoe um, in a different way to usual. And so there are certainly a number of signs associated with osteoarthritis and many of them are less obvious than one might think. Lovely, thank you Lucy. Um, and as a lot of you have probably experienced for yourselves, lameness is really common in horses um, and 60% of all lamenesses is actually caused by arthritis. So it is likely that many of you will experience it in your horses at some point. So what can cause arthritis to occur? So the causes of arthritis can be broadly grouped into these three main areas. So the first is trauma leading to long-term damage. So if a horse has suffered a kick to the joint area or knocked the joint, then this can cause small amounts of damage to the joint surface, which is the cartilage. 
And then this will then over time progress to degenerative changes to the joint, which ultimately leads to arthritis. The second is excessive loading. And this can be from periods of intense exercise or from general wear and tear over time associated with normal levels of exercise. And much like in people, horses can develop arthritis even from normal activity over a long enough period of time. I'm sure there's some of you that may have arthritis yourself and, and can relate to this. So the third is concussion. So this is the force that radiates up the limb when it strikes hard ground. And it can also occur over time if a horse does the same work repeatedly on the same surface or if the surface is poor. So when these things occur, it triggers this cycle of inflammation within the joint. So the inflammation within the joint causes the joint to swell, which leads to pain. And this causes more inflammation within the joint, which leads to more swelling and more pain and so on. We're in this vicious cycle. And at the same time, the inflammation can cause damage to the surface of the joint itself, which is the cartilage. And this damage causes more inflammation within the joint, which again causes more damage to the cycle, to the cartilage, sorry. So what this means is that if you're treating the damage to the surface of the joint, as well as the inflammation and the swelling within the joint, then even with treatment, arthritis becomes worse over time. So before we talk more about using medication to treat arthritis, I wanted to talk about some of the ways we can help either prevent or manage arthritis. So when we're talking about prevention for arthritis, what we really mean is delaying the onset for as long as possible. It's highly likely that given enough time, most horses will develop some signs of degradation within their joints. And delaying this onset can be difficult to achieve and does involve um, really careful management of your horse. And that can be difficult, particularly in some livery situations. So management, on the other hand, is about slowing down how quickly the arthritis gets worse once the horse has already developed the disease. So again, this involves careful management. And even when you do everything right, we're not always successful in slowing it down. Having said that, there are steps that we should take that can help to prevent and manage arthritis, because even a little extra help in these cases can make the difference between your horse being able to continue to enjoy life or your horse being in pain. So firstly, let's have a look at ways that we're able to prevent arthritis or at least delay the onset. So what can we do to help support healthy joints for as long as possible? Now, the first thing is joint supplements. So they can help to maintain the overall health of the joint. There are some studies that support the use of supplements. Lucy, I'm going to hand over to you again at this point to tell us a bit more about supplements that might help to prevent arthritis. Perfect. Um, yes. So as Juliet has just said, there is now a reasonable amount of research and evidence supporting the use of jo joint supplements and certain ingredients have been shown to provide particularly beneficial effects in horses joints. Um, glucosamine and chondroitin are probably the most widely discussed nutritional ingredients. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit further insight into them. Um, glucosamine is actually derived from chitin, which is a component of crustacean shells, fun fact. Um, and its mechanism of action is not fully confirmed, but it's thought to be multimodal. So it has a number of different effects within the joint, including acting as an anti-inflammatory, increasing the cartilage's ability to repair and increasing protein synthesis. Um, chondroitin improves cartilage quality by essentially providing a pool of materials for the joint to use, um, and it also improves the quality of the synovial fluid, um, so the lubricating fluid within the joint. Um, it has in human trials been shown to improve the symptoms of arthritis. Obviously, doctors have the benefit of being able to ask their patients how they feel after taking a supplement, unlike us. Um, but again, like glucosamine, its full mechanism um, it remains um, unknown, unfortunately. Um, what is known, however, is that administration of 
um, with glucosamine and chondroitin together has a far greater effect compared to when given individually because they act synergistically. Um, more recently, um, other ingredients such as avocado and soya bean, um, as well as green-lipped muscle extract have been shown to have varying degrees of benefit on equine joints. Um, it's important to add um, that all supplementary ingredients um, can be used for maintenance to help keep joint, joints healthy even before arthritic changes are noted. So it's important to have a chat with your vet um, about supplements you might be considering using or supplements that they might re um, recommend, not just in lameness cases, uh, but for all horses in all walks of life. Lovely. Thank you, Lucy. Um, rest days is the next point. So they're really important. So if your horse is in full work, then having a couple of days off um, each week just allows their muscles and joints to recover and to strengthen. As far as possible, if you're riding in an arena, either at home or at competitions, you want to choose to ride on good quality surfaces that allow some give and movement as the foot hits the floor, but also that is firm enough to support the foot and distribute the forces evenly up the leg. It's important to include a variety um, of exercise uh, into what your horse does. Um, so avoid doing the same thing over and over. So you want to have a mix of schooling, hacking, pole work and jumping. And this can help strengthen different parts of the joint. So helping it um, keep them strong and flexible. And also make sure that you warm your horse up properly to help reduce the chance of, of injury or, or joint trauma. Lucy, is there anything else that you'd like to add to this bit, please? Um, well, really, I just reiterate everything that you said, to be honest. Um, in order for joints to perform properly, uh, properly, we have to carefully manage the whole horse. That's really key. Um, so it's really important that all the surrounding structures around the joint are kept healthy and strong. And absolutely all the things you've suggested are going to do that. So, yeah, exactly as you said, whether it's a, an event that we're treating, a dressage horse, um, pony competing at pony club or just a happy hacker it is so important that they maintain that core level of fitness um, and have a variety of different exercise which helps them maintain good musculoskeletal health brilliant thank you so all of these things are really good practice to help keep your horse sound but as we've already mentioned even with all of these measures a lot of horses will still develop arthritis at some point in their lives so if you're concerned about arthritis in your horse, it's really important to speak to your vet as soon as you can to get a diagnosis so that you can then manage it. Lucy, could you tell everyone a bit about how you would go about diagnosing a horse with arthritis? Absolutely. Um, so for any horse that we see um, when a client is concerned about osteoarthritis, the first thing we do is just a full clinical examination. And that just helps to ensure that we don't miss anything. Um, and it also helps to ensure that we pick up on any areas of heat, swelling or pain, anything that might help guide our investigation. Um, following this, we'll then watch the horse move. And this will be on different surfaces. So on the hard, on the soft, in the straight line, on the lunge. We might also perform some flexion tests um, and may also see the horse ridden if it's um, safe and practical to do so. Um, all of this just helps us build a full clinical picture and an idea of how to guide our further investigations. Um, so after that, um, the investigation becomes more tailored to the horse um, and might involve some nerve blocks. So that's when we inject local anaesthetic into specific sites, whether that's just around nerves or into joints um, and helps isolate the source of pain and lameness. Um, we might also recommend some imaging such as x-ray and ultrasound. And in certain cases, um, we may refer the horse for um, more advanced imaging techniques such as MRI um, or nucleus contigraphy, which is more commonly known as bone scan, um, and that might be required just in order to establish a very accurate diagnosis. Thank you. So what can we do for horses when arthritis is present? So just like in people, the earlier stage arthritis can be managed and horses can continue to be active and in work for a long time. So what can we do to help manage these cases? 
So keeping feet properly trimmed. So you want the hoof to be well balanced to reduce the wear and tear on the joints. So long toes, cracked and uneven hoof surfaces can increase the joint stress due to the uneven forces that are traveling up through all the joints within the leg. And this can cause arthritis to progress quicker. So by correcting any imbalances, it can really help to slow the development of arthritis. Corrections in trimming or, or shoeing can be beneficial with horses with conformational issues as well. And then another key area to bear in mind is the bear in mind is the weight of your horse. So like with people, keeping your horse lean and in good shape will help to reduce the weight and therefore the stress on their joints. So overweight horses are less agile and more likely to take a bad step and therefore injuring themselves. And your vet can help to advise on ways to reduce the weight of your horse in a healthy way if any of your horses are a bit on the porky side. So low weight bearing exercise such as swimming or water treadmill can help to build the muscles around the joint without adding to the stress on the joint itself. So by building and strengthening the muscles, the joint will become better supported, which can slow the progression of arthritis. Providing um, supporting surfaces for your horse to stand on, particularly in the stable, um, such as rubber flooring. So that can provide some relief to horses, especially the, as they spend long periods of time on their feet. And of course, there are a variety of medical treatments available for the management and treatment of arthritis. And the key to keeping arthritis under control is early detection and quick action to decrease the damage to the joint. So by promptly treating the causes like the trauma, particularly in young horses, it may lead to a return of complete soundness. So do make sure that you speak to your vet as soon as you suspect anything and they can give you advice. So we're now going to look at treatment options, but first let's have a think about what we'd like to achieve in horses with arthritic changes. So we firstly need to remove any known causes and to reduce the ongoing risk factors. So that could be sepsis in the joint, it could be chips or fragments, OCD lesions, trauma, soft tissue injury, um, which we need to address. And also look at the ongoing risk factors. So for example, poor foot balance, training intensity or the surface that you're riding on, or maybe obesity. So we also want to stop the pain and the lameness that we see in our horses, as well as the inflammation. And in addition to this, ideally, we would like to stop the arthritis getting worse and, if possible, reverse the damage that has already been done. So traditional therapies have not been able to target the cartilage repair specifically. So to this point, we've tried to slow down the degradation of the joint or stop it. But until now, we haven't been able to target the mechanisms that can repair damaged cartilage. As many of you, as many of, as, as many of you know, with traditional treatments, this hasn't been possible. So the most common treatments that are used are steroid injections. These do have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. So they're able to reduce the pain and the lameness. So they are a good option for many cases, but what they don't do is to stop the arthritis getting worse. And some may actually contribute to the deterioration of the joint over time. So with traditional treatments, the damage in the joint remains and continues to get worse. So because of this, repeated treatments are often needed, but over time, the treatments last for less and less time until eventually they stop working altogether. And the reason for this is that traditional treatments only suppress the symptoms. They don't address the underlying disease or the damage to the surface of the joint. Lucy, would you like to add anything on traditional treatments for arthritis? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just to say, I mean, obviously, most of the people who are attending um, this talk are going to be very familiar with a lot of the traditional treatments that we have available. Um, I just wanted to um, add a bit more onto the sort of intra-articular options that we have available. So obviously, we've mentioned um, steroids, which help to reduce the inflammation um, and certainly 
they are used um, to great effect in many cases, um, though, as you say, obviously don't have the benefit of actually treating the underlying disease. Um, we have other options such as hyaluronic acid as well, improving the viscosity and elasticity um, of the joint fluid, um, alongside having some chondroprotective effects and um, protecting the cartilage. Again, not treating the actual joint, but do certainly have um, beneficial effects for horses with arthritis. Um, there are more recently products such as um, the polyacrylamide hydrogels, um, which have become popular, but it's really important to remember that no two horses are the same and different treatments are going to be required for every horse. So if your horse is diagnosed with arthritis, it's really important to have a good chat with your vet um, to discuss and determine the appropriate treatment options. And in some cases, those appropriate treatment options might not even be an injection into a joint. Um, some horses will manage well on non-steroidal anti-inflammatories when they're given orally. Um, and these drugs will act on the arthritic inflammatory cycle to improve the joint health um, and to be hugely beneficial in some cases. So um, while certainly I'm going to move on and talk about how we can actually address the underlying damage and everything, um, certainly that's not the case for every horse but um yeah it's an exciting new option we have available thank you lucy so yeah ultimately even with with treatment you know arthritis can um become worse over time and that's why we think you know stem cell treatment is a really exciting new option for treating arthritis and in the last couple of years there have been advancements in that there are now licensed stem cell products for treating arthritis in horses and these treatments can be discussed with your vet to determine if they are appropriate for your horse's condition and it will depend on a number of factors and it won't be suitable for all cases. So what are stem cells? So stem cells are crucial for the development of both humans and animals. So they're the body's master cells and embryonic stem cells can grow into any one of the body's cell types. So in human medicine, they are researching stem cells as a way to grow new organs, for example. And this type of stem cell research is still experimental in horses. And so I want to make the distinction between these stem cells that you may have heard about and the ones that we use to treat arthritis in horses. So the stem cells that we're discussing today are called mesenchymal stem cells, and they are present in quite small quantities in adult tissues. They still have the ability to grow into a range of tissues, but these are more restricted. So they may grow into cartilage, bone, muscle or tendons, for example. And we know a lot more about these types of stem cells and the effect, effect that they have to the point that there are now licensed veterinary medicines available, as I said, that contain these stem cells. So being a licensed product means that they are tested for safety, quality and efficacy, and they're approved by the authorities for use specifically in horses. So why do we use stem cells to treat equine arthritis? Well, we know that stem cell therapy injected into the affected joint can treat the lameness and inflammation, as we talked about earlier in our aim for treatment. But not only that, stem cells for the first time are able to target cartilage production to increase the healing and reverse some of the damage that's caused by arthritis. So this means that the joint as a whole is treated. So the pain, inflammation, synovial membrane, the joint fluid and the cartilage. So in short, stem cell therapy aims to treat both the symptoms of arthritis and the disease too. So how do stem cells work? So they do this by some surprising mechanisms and it might be easier to think of the way a stem cell works as a treatment like any drug, but instead of molecules inside an injection, it contains cells that carry out the treatment. So firstly, stem cells release these natural but effective anti-inflammatories into the joint that treat the lameness and the inflammation. But what they do next, and you can see from this diagram, is to gather at the site of the damaged cartilage and talk or communicate to the resident 
cartilage cells, asking them to increase the cartilage production and to heal the damaged tissue. So this means that cartilage damage heals as new rather than as scar tissue. And there are additional benefit, beneficial effects such as improving the quality of the joint fluid. So there are, as we said, licensed veterinary medicines now widely available for the treatment of equine arthritis that contain these exciting stem cells. So what can we expect from treatment? So as an owner, you'll want to see how a stem cell treatment could help your horse. And it is important to note that all cases are different, as Lucy said, and there are a lot of variables that affect the response to treatment and the duration of treatment as well. Your vets are brilliant, but they don't have a crystal ball. However, there are published clinical trials on stem cell products that can give us a guide. And we can see here that 70% of horses that were treated with stem cell therapy were a success after just three weeks. And that increased to 78% at six weeks. And importantly for you as an owner, you will want to know what the longer term results are like. So 84% of horses in this study were back competing or training at the same level as they were prior to their lameness and no other treatments were given in this time. So I think that's pretty impressive. So in summary, arthritis is a degenerative disease and it can be really frustrating to treat. However, making even small changes can help to prevent or manage arthritis. And when arthritis is present, vets now have the opportunity to administer stem cells to treat the lameness and to target that cartilage repair, therefore allowing you to have more active time with your horse. So just keep in mind that there are a number of factors that will affect whether your horse is suitable for stem cell therapy and there may be other more appropriate treatments. Um, so please speak to your vet for advice that's, that's specific to your horse. So that's the end of the, the presentation. We're now going to come on to the Q&A session. So if anybody was late joining and didn't hear us near the beginning, please use the, the Q&A function. Um, I'd also like to um, just mention now that when the webinar does end, there will be a really short survey that will pop up on the screen. And myself and, and all those at Cliff Equine would really appreciate you just taking a minute or so to complete that survey because it will just help us to um, understand what topics you might like for, for future um, sessions and also whether you, you know, prefer these virtual online um, webinars or, or the face-to-face -face ones from, from before uh, pre-COVID times. So um, we are now going to, as I say, come on to the, the Q&As. So um, the first question, Lucy, what is the difference between arthritic changes and arthritis? I've heard the first terminology frequently, but I'm unsure when the changes become arthritis. Yes, so um, the reality is, is any horse with arthritic changes does have arthritis. So arthritic changes basically are the bony changes that occur within the joint. Um, however, the relevant part is how, what impact they're having on the symptoms that the horse has. So whether the horse, the horse can have arthritic changes over a joint, but actually not have symptoms. So it might not be lame, might not be sore, might not have that sort of stiffness or difficulty lifting the legs or anything like that that we discussed. However, unfortunately, if they have arthritic changes, so if they have those bony changes, that really is arthritis. I mean, arthritis literally means inflammation of the joint, anything ending in itis, whether it's tonsillitis or um, anything like that, that just means inflammation. So in that stage, all we're saying is inflammation of the joint, but for each horse, it's gonna be different in terms of how that presents and how relevant it is for that horse. So in some cases, we have horses with multitude of arthritic changes, um, which um, don't actually aren't of any clinical relevance and other horses that have very mild arthritic changes will be very difficult to visualize on x-rays and have to go for MRIs in order to identify them um, that is much more significant for that horse so um, yes I hope that answers the question. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Um, the next question, are there particular breeds that are more susceptible? So there's a lot of ongoing debate in terms of whether or not um, there's breeds that are more susceptible. I think probably it's more sort of the lifestyle that each horse has, which makes them more or less um, susceptible. So um, things like quarter horses that do a lot of work, work on their hocks and everything like that are more going to be more predisposed to developing hock OA, um, so hock osteoarthritis, and um, race horses are going to be more prone to developing osteoarthritis in their carpus, so in their knees. So um, it's more, more about sort of what that horse is doing in its lifetime rather than sort of breed predispositions. Great, thank you. Um, I've heard of Boswellia, Boswellia helping too. Is that a recommended supplement? Um, absolutely. I mean, Boswellia is a very good anti natural anti-inflammatory. So it's used in a lot of different joint um, supplements. There aren't huge amounts of studies which um, look into it as, as a supplement. But certainly um, from a clinical perspective, we see a lot of clients using it and um, liking its use as well. Um, certainly we have... Um, there's a product available called Bosmerics now, which um, has a lot of Boswellia in it, um, sort of a no butte alternative. Um, but that's, yeah, so that's a Boswellia based supplement, essentially. So there are plenty of supplements out there with Boswellia in and certainly do have a clinical effect. So. Thank you. Um, are rest days more beneficial when they're consecutive or non-consecutive? Um, I would probably say that's going to be quite horse dependent um, in terms of whether or not they how they're tolerating their exercise, how level of exercise they're in. Um, and in terms of, yeah, exactly what's going to benefit them most, I would probably say spreading your rest days through the week is going to be more beneficial than saying exercising them all week and then having a Saturday and Sunday off because then at least they're going to get a break halfway through. But it really is that is very much horse dependent and whether their their fitness level tolerates having more work days than rest days or um, how they're going essentially. So unfortunately that's quite horse, yeah, horse specific. <laughs> Um, I'm using turmeric, cider vinegar and butte at the moment. She's OK um, living out 24-7 and she has no shoes. Is there anything else I'm missing going into winter? I'm worried about the cold and she's been fully retired. Um, I mean, you're absolutely correct to be more concerned about the winter. Horses with arthritis do often struggle more in the cold. They get stiffer and everything um, as they're going into the winter time. Um, I think the best thing to do would really be to have a chat with your vet and get them to come out and have a look at her, just to make sure that there's nothing being missed at that stage. Um, I wouldn't want to really comment in terms of then there was anything specific you're missing, um, but certainly um, I would recommend definitely a vet visit um, before you're going into the winter just to make sure there's nothing additionally um, that could be useful for you in terms of um, her management. What's the recommended length of time to lunge a horse for? I never go beyond 15 minutes, but is that enough time to properly warm up and cool down? Bearing in mind that all gates are on a 15 to 20 metre circle. Again, I think this is probably quite a horse specific question in terms of um, how long it's going to take them to warm up and cool down. Um, certainly slow and steady is never a bad thing. Um, and so if you can take longer sort of in gentle sort of walk and trot to get them to warm up, um, they're always going to benefit from that. Um, however, sort of you can also judge it from there um, how puffy they're getting, how tired they're looking. Um, if you've got a really fit horse, then 15 minutes um, may be too short. Um, they might need a little bit longer to help them warm up. But if they're quite, if they're sort of just on average work, then 15 minutes is probably more than enough in terms of getting them warm um, and ready for work. Thank you. Do you have any papers on joint supplements you can share equine based, not the Murray paper? And if you had to pick the most important active ingredients as a preventative versus actually tackling active osteoarthritis, would it be chondroitin and glucosamine or something else? And how many grams per kilogram of body weight would you recommend for those? Um, so in terms of papers on joint supplements, there are a lot out there. Um, if you're particularly interested, I'd suggest you just um, email, us, me, email us at the clinic um, in terms of getting um, details for those. Um, in terms of the most important active ingredients, I think it's really the ones that we mentioned 
earlier in the talk. So yeah, certainly the chondroitin glucosamine, also looking at avocado soil and that green lip muscle extract, that's certainly beneficial. Um, most joint supplements will, well, the good ones anyway, will incorporate all of those into, um, into the supplement. So in terms of looking at grams per kilo body weight, that really is supplement based and it depends on the concentration of those um, substances within it. There are various veterinary prescribed supplements, which are the ones which we base on papers um, and can be accessed through pretty much every veterinary practice. Um, so I would suggest um, contacting your vet if you want to be very, um, if you want to be 100 percent sure that you're getting a supplement, which is essentially um, based on all of the research that's out there. Um, otherwise, there are numerous ones available. Um, it might be just worth running it past your vet in terms of how appropriate they may, may or may not be for your horse. How many horses were in the study of stem, stem cells? This one's for me. Um, so the, the field trial for the stem cells had 75 horses in there. And they had to have, um, there's a, you may be aware that your vets use a, a lameness score. Um, and quite often there's a, what's called the AAEP lameness score, which is from one to five. And horses had to have a lameness of two or three out of five on that um, scale to then to then be in the study. Okay. How does the cost of stem cells compare with steroid injections, say in a hock joint? Lucy, I'll leave that to you. Um, so I think the best thing to do is establish whether or not stem cells would be appropriate or not for the horse, first of all, because the reality is um, whether the most the most effective treatment is always going to be the most cost effective because otherwise you can end up using endless amounts of steroid injections when steroids, um, when stem cells would have been more appropriate or if stem cells aren't going to be appropriate for the horse, then um, certainly a, a different option might be available. If, um, in terms of knowing cost and everything like that, it would be best to contact your vet to have a chat with them exactly how much it would cost. What are common factors that would prevent a horse from being able to receive stem cell treatment? Um, so it really does depend on the horse. So horses that are going to be most benefit, going to benefit most from the stem cell treatment are horses with these cartilage lesions who are particularly lame. And we haven't found any other specific changes on um, x-rays, ultrasound, MRIs and everything like that. Um, so it's certainly ruling them into our inclusion criteria um, and then also making sure that they haven't had other treatments in the recent in their recent history, essentially. So, um, yeah, um, it's it's difficult to say without sort of knowing what the horse has had in the past. Um, I don't know if you want to add an, anything, Juliet, on that one. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head, really, Lucy. It's it's it is very dependent. <laughs> Sorry, Anna. Yeah. Um, it's really very horse dependent. If you have any, if you want to discuss that further, then please do feel free to email or call into the clinic and we can have a chat. Um, at what stage in injury or diagnosis would stem cells be used? Um, so they can be used fairly early on into the injury, um, but obviously we need to have that accurate diagnosis to go along with it. So sometimes the diagnosis can take longer to achieve and sometimes we need to send them for further imaging in order to be able to get it. So sometimes it can be um, fairly rapid that we realize exactly what's going on. Sometimes it takes a few weeks to get them in for an MRI and at that stage we decide it's appropriate. So um, normally we'd use it sort of, yeah, on the initial, um, initial phase of finding the appropriate lesion and treat at that stage. <laughs> Can a horse have stem cell treatment after arthromid? I'm happy to take this one. Um, excuse me. Yes, they can, but you just need to wait six weeks post um, treatment with, with arthromid. And the reason being is because the arthromid can have a, a negative effect on the cell. So it can it can kill off the, the stem cells. Um, so yeah, just, just wait six weeks post arthromid. Can stem cell treatment be used for severe cases of arthritis, e.g. a chip in coffin joints? Um, I think, again, that's going to be a conversation with your vet in terms of exactly what's going on um, from their perspective. I think the reality is unless we need to be able to treat all the different causes of what's going on. So um, it may 
may be a candidate if it's if it's going to target specific areas but there is a possibility that it might not be if we can't if you're not removing the chip or doing something further from that perspective yeah you probably start with an arthroscopy yeah. wouldn't you to remove that yeah. chip um and then wait sort of three weeks post an arthroscopy as well before using the stem cells what is the approximate cost of stem cell treatment and is it successful in older horses? Um, again, you'd, I need to talk to your best in terms of costings, I'm afraid. Um, in terms of success in older horses, um, absolutely. In terms, I've certainly used it in an older horse, um, but I don't know, Juliet, in terms of the studies, whether you know what the ages were. I can't think, actually. Well, I know they, they did vary from certainly into the 20s I'm trying to remember what the mean age was now I'll have a look at that whilst we're answering other questions but uh, yeah it, it's certainly been used in in older horses absolutely again it it's case dependent is this um, an ongoing form of treatment or something done on a once off or occasional basis so the stem cells in the majority of cases, you would expect it to be a one-off form of treatment just because of how the stem cells are working to actually repair the joint. But it does very much depend on what your horse is doing. So if, for example, you're a, a light hacker, you know, that type of horse is less likely to need retreatment compared to a, um, you know, top show jumper who is out pounding hard ground, um, you know, continuously so it depends very much what you're doing with the horse which joint is affected um, but you know in general it's not something that we expect to be an ongoing form of treatment like you would for example with, with steroid injections is there anything you'd add to that Lucy? Um, no absolutely what you said. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> are the facet joints of the spine suitable for stem cell treatment? Um, so from my point of view, stem cells are, are licensed to be used in um, a joint that is showing lameness. So you wouldn't see lameness from from the facet joints. But, you know, what would you add, Lucy? Um, I mean, certainly we see osteoarthritic change in facet joints, mm. but it's a slightly different process um, and slightly different um, lesions that we see. So I've I don't know of anyone using them um, specifically, um, certainly these ones for um, use of facet joints of the spine. It might be something that in future years we start to see um, people using, but I certainly wouldn't want to. Um, yeah, we think we need to, there'd be need to be further research on that side of things in terms of whether it be appropriate or not. Mm. To it. Yeah. My horse has had severe arthritis for years now and I've done a lot of treatment, but it's got slightly worse since being on loan and is now on Danalon full term now. Would stem cell treatment be an option? And would you say light schooling would be good for him? Um, again, I think it's going to be a very frustrating answer for this person. <laughs> it's really going to be case dependent and exactly what arthritic change is going on for your horse, um, which would determine whether or not they'd be suitable. Um, Certainly, if it's been going on for a long time, I suspect there's probably further changes which may not be responsive to cell, stem cell treatment. So you might need different treatment or um, some further options before using it or um, just yeah, a variety of other options. Um, as we said, it's not suitable for every horse. Um, it's suitable in a lot of cases, which is fantastic. But um, yeah, I would um, certainly say I'd have a chat with your vet um, in terms of whether or not it could be an option because they will know more in terms of um, exactly what's going on inside that joint. Yeah. Are the stem cells used gathered from your horse? Um, so the stem cells that we're talking about um, this evening are from donor horses um, in the um, peripheral blood. And the donor horses, there's a, a small herd of top quality um, horses that are out in Belgium living the absolute life of luxury. So the stem cells are actually from donor horses and they are screened um, constantly to make sure that those stem cells um, have the same um, quality um, so that every dose is, is exactly the same. 
Um, so like I say, what we're talking about here isn't from um, from your own horse. So that's a different type of, of stem cell treatment called um, allergenic stem cells. Is there anything I can do to help with horses arthritis throughout the winter and colder months? I notice she is significantly more lame in the cold weather. Any products to help warm up the joints before riding? I think it sort of overlaps with the um, previous question, but certainly, yes, that's a common finding that arthritic horses are worse during the cold weather as they stiffen up, partially probably because they're being box rested more and also the cold weather does just affect their joints as it does in people. Um, so in terms of maintenance, certainly using a joint supplement was a great idea. Um, also just having a chat with your vet as to whether any medications might be applicable. Um, sometimes just some anti-inflammatories help get them through the winter before the warmer weather kicks in. Um, so yeah, a chat with your vet in terms of what is available and might be suitable for your horse. Um, again, yeah, who knows, stem cells might be an option. <laughs> What's the name of the procedure injecting stem cells? And the second part of this question we've already answered. So on average, how often do they need the injection? So we've answered that part. So just that first bit Lucy um so it's just it's a joint injection so um it's yeah it's not got a specific name because it will depend on which joint is being injected would you recommend stem cells on a degenerated hock joint with large spur um again if there's a lot if there is a large spur if there's significant other bony change being available you probably the reality is if you use stem cells you're probably not dealing with the cause of the arthritic change. Um, so it may not be an option in that case, but again, we need to sort of know what other lesions are available as to whether or not it would be. Can we give mute on a long-term basis to horses with severe arthritis? Um, it really depends on the horse and how well they tolerate it. Certainly there are plenty of horses that are on long-term butte. It's not ideal, certainly. There are side effects associated with it. So, um, But in some cases, it is the only option that we have available. So um, it's weighing up the pros and cons of that decision, um, whether or not um, they are, horses obviously need to be pain-free from a welfare perspective. Um, but then it's also balancing it with those side effects. So certainly considering potentially having them on a probiotic or something similar to support their gut, because that will be the most common side effect of giving long term butte um, developing diarrhea and other gut issues. So potentially, yeah, considering a probiotic, considering some supplements potentially to reduce that dose that they're required and just keeping them on as low a dose as possible if really there are no further options for those horses. OK, so does CBD pellets help? Um, I'm assuming that I don't think that's really a UK thing. It's marijuana, isn't it? Yeah. CBD. <laughs> I've never, I've never used it. <laughs> um, have stem cells been used in any other joints other than limb joints? Um, I'm assuming it's sort of again referring to those spine um, lesions and um, neck lesions and everything like that. And um, I've never personally used it in anything other than the limb joint and as sort of discussed those haven't been in terms of the studies and everything there are, isn't that data available at the moment and so and um, that's not to say it won't be in the future. What can you recommend for treating sacroiliac joints issues? Um, so certainly we can medicate sacroiliacs with a variety of different things um, and also making sure there's no other concurrent issues going on really important um sacroiliac issues often go hand in hand with other limb problems so make it just making sure that that's not an issue lots of physio lots of um pole work and things like that to ensure that their core is nice and strong um but ultimately yeah it depends on their degree of pain so have a chat with your vet in terms of making sure that they um are fully comfortable and then certainly lots of um core work is going to be really important for those horses with si issues my horse has had arthritis in his back cock since 2011. I did MSM, glucosamine and chondroitin for five years and then his body started rejecting it. I then did hock injections, which has helped. Now I'm noticing that he is overcompensating on one leg when standing because the fetlock on the left does not have as much mobility. What can I do to help with that inflammation in the other fetlock? Um, again, I would start with imaging, some imaging of that fetlock and potentially blocking it to see whether or not there is 
sort of a more focused approach that you could take. So I think certainly some further investigation around that area would be a good idea. Um, from a general support perspective, again, um, yeah, continuing on other joint supplements, potentially if the initial targeted approach wasn't working. Um, and then, um, yeah, I think I would definitely be inclined to image that better lock joint if that really is, and make sure that is the um, cause of the issue. Um, is arthritis hereditary? Um, sort of covered that again, um, but ultimately there's a lot of debate around it. Um, again, I think it's more due to sort of the workload of each horse. Um, no two horses are the same, and that certainly counts for arthritis. So um, certainly we do seem to see it in more um, certain breeds of horses, but there is a huge debate as to whether it's actually hereditary or not. Would you recommend shockwave therapy for arthritis? Um, in some cases, yes. In um, some cases, um, no. I think it really depends on how comfortable the horse is and um, whether or not shockwave therapy is an option for that animal. Um, it can be beneficial in terms of trying to stimulate um, healing changes, but ultimately you want to reduce inflammation. So it's often not an appropriate choice for, for some horses and a lot of horses would be too sore to use it anyway. So um, it is it's variable um, in terms of um, using it concurrently with other therapies. Sometimes it can be helpful, but um, yeah, um, it really depends on the case. Mm -hmm. Are stem cells available in the USA? Um, I would ask you to speak to your vet in the States um, and, and find out exactly what treatments are available over there. Um, I'm not sure specifically in terms of what we're, we're talking about this evening. OK. I like that. Can't deal with the flashing light. <laughs> uh, shouldn't we be addressing other issues such as starting horses too young, working too hard too young, riding too many circles, riding horses in the overbent position rather than in self-carriage, which I presume can also exacerbate all joint problems? Absolutely. Um, that's a whole other whole other topic for topic. another evening. Absolutely. Um, I yeah, of course we should be. Um, and certainly in terms of education and everything like that, so important. Um, this that's sort of not really within the scope of this um, little talk, which is more focused on um, treatment of equine arthritis, but certainly it's a really important point. Would it be suitable to give steroid injections to a 21 year old horse that's in full work? and has no obvious lameness or stiffness, but suspected arthritis in a knee? Um, possibly, again, I think it would be worth confirming that arthritis before jumping into giving steroids, there are side effects associated with giving them. So definitely worth discussing that with your vet. Is MSM plus vitamin C recommended? Um, I don't have huge amounts of experience with either of those in terms of joint supplements. I would um, be inclined to stick to more um, uh, ones that we have a lot of research for. So um, looking at that chondroitin, glucosamine, um, avocado, soya, everything we talked about. You mentioned gels as a treatment. Is there something you can recommend? Um, I'm assuming you're sort of talking about the hydrogels. So um, we've had a brief chat about sort of Artemid, that's a joint injection rather than being um, sort of an applicable gel. There are various sort of anti-inflammatory gels. So if there's a specific swelling and something like, something like that, then that would be worth contacting your vet about and various cooling gels and things like that. But um, I'm assuming you'll be talking about the hydrogels. They are sort of a joint injection, so they are very much more specific. Do the stem cells have any efficacy with soundness years after the injury? So we spoke about um, looking at those a year um, after the, the lameness occurred. Um, the product in question has now been on the market in the UK for uh, just over two years. And we are building sort of a, a you know, plethora of cases with looking at monitoring um, the soundness of horses but um, yes there are there are cases which are still sound but it's that um, boring answer again that it is on a case-by-case -case basis <laughs> anything there to add Lucy um just I'm not sure whether the question means is it sound if basically if the horse had the injury for a long time and then using stem cells okay could go that way yeah yeah if it is I'm not um 
again, I haven't used it in any cases that have been um, sort of very chronic arthritic cases. I'm not sure whether there were any reported ones from the study or whether they were all just recently diagnosed situations. Yeah. Uh, my 10 year old gelding has osteoarthritis in right hind fetlock and during an arthroscopy, my vet discovered a one centimeter size area of damaged cartilage. He hasn't responded well to, I suppose, uh, hyaluronic acid uh, joint medication or arthromid would stem cell therapy be no good for treating such extensive damage um, it certainly could be an option if struggling with any other with other treatments um i would say that yeah um it would be worth having a chat with your vet in terms of whether or not it's available um i again it's difficult to say in terms of not knowing huge amount about the case and also um, not knowing if there's any other issues going on um, but certainly I mean by all means I would have a chat with your vet and see whether it's available. Do Cliff offer stem cell treatment what is the cost and what is the process? We absolutely do. Um, the cost would be, you need to discuss that with us um, and the process would I mean sort of be what we discussed, would be a lameness workup um, to establish exactly what's going on, make sure the horse is a candidate um, and then they come in and have the stem cell treatment with us. Um, someone just late to the to the webinar asking if it's recorded. Yes, absolutely is. So um, the recording will be available from um, Cliff Equine. Um, afterwards is there an upper age range after which stem cell treatment would not be indicated again sort of as we discussed not that i'm aware of but no <laughs> yeah uh what general supplement would you advise to use to maintain arthritis i think we spoke about that in the presentation really so your um glucosamine chondroitin etc would you add anything on that um, just in terms, if you wanted a sort of brand or something, I would always, I mean, I have to suggest the veterinary prescribed supplements that would be available for most veterinary practices. Mm. Yeah, always best to get one that your vet recommends rather than you can spend a fortune on ones off the shelf. Uh, out of the study that was undertaken for stem cell treatment, was there a variation that we've, uh, on, in the age of the horses? So, um, yes, there was. Uh, I think we've answered a lot of that one. Uh, is there a recommended time period in between stem cell injections? So as we said, it's, you know, in most, a lot of cases, it would be a one-off treatment. So, you know, they weren't having um, repeated doses of the stem cells. Um, we've al already talked about the Boswellia. Uh, what do you think of use of PEMF and laser therapy as physio for arthritis? Um, it's more down to what the horse is, available, is able to tolerate in terms of um, their comfort levels and what's appropriate. It really depends on where the arthritis is and what's going on from that perspective. But I would certainly um, get your vet and physio to have a chat in terms of um, what's going to be the most appropriate um, physiotherapy treatments for them. Certainly physio and arthritis are, um, go hand in hand as well. They're great concurrent there. It's great to have physio, and physio on board in terms of treatment. As we've discussed, it's a whole horse issue. You've got to keep the whole horse going um, and support all of those surrounding structures around the joints. So um, I would, yeah, I think that lots of physio treatments are very, very appropriate for horses with arthritis, but certainly it's, you need your vet and your physio to have a chat as to what's going to be more, most appropriate for with each horse. Okay. Would stem cell therapy benefit a horse with severe hock arthritis? Uh, I feel like we've sort of, we covered this mostly. I think it really depends on the severity of the hock arthritis um, and exactly what's going on mm. as to whether or not it's going to be a benefit in each horse. It really is, a, as we've said, a case by case basis, I'm afraid. And I would also add on um, the hock arthritis that, you know, traditionally you were wanting to fuse the joints in a hock, um, but dependent on the severity of the hock arthritis stem cells can actually be to be beneficial in in the earlier cases to actually you know reverse that and actually get the joint back to to its full motion you know in those low motion joints um, are there aspects of the diet which can aid in helping arthritis with anti-inflammatory properties 
Um, really, it's, it's a lot of the stuff which we add to diets in terms of um, uh, oils and everything like that, which are often included in a lot of new, um, sort of feeds that horses get. I think the question is in terms of how bioavailable they are. So how well the body's going to be able to break them down and use them. So the most important thing with a lot of these supplements is the fact that a lot of them, they can be coated in specific ways so that they're then broken down by the gut appropriately. Um, and then so they're actually available for the horse. And that was really key. And that's why we use a lot of, sort of the veterinary supplements, which are these targeted um, ingredients in order which are broken down appropriately by the horse so the horse can actually use them because a lot of the debate is sort of how bioavailable so how able the horse is actually to process the ingredients and I think that's yeah certainly one of the big things um, that, that we would caution against in terms of just feeding different ingredients to horses because not all of them are actually going to then um, be available to the horse nutritionally you can spend a lot of money as we said on a lot of feed supplements and everything like that which aren't necessarily going to be of benefit yeah um and the same the same question so um we won't answer this because we've just answered it but the question was does feed play a part in affecting um, arthritis so i think we've just answered that one um would inflammation be noticed by the naked eye specifically in the stifle area i have a horse with short steps um, and is sore in the stifle, but no inflammation or heat? Um, not necessarily. As we've said, every horse is different. Every horse can, some horses can present with swelling, but no lameness. Other horses present with lameness, but no swelling. So um, certainly if they're sore, sore around their stifle, that's something that would yeah, need further work up if there was no obvious swelling or heat or anything like that. Um, so again, yeah, um, sometimes that inflammation is very visible. You have a big swollen joint and sometimes you really won't can bandaging help um again sort of a case by case basis normally dependent on swelling and um, sometimes bandaging is useful but sometimes you also don't want the limb to overheat so that really is depending on the horse um, and depending on this, what swelling is going on yeah uh does it work body wide or just to the targeted area so the stem cells would work in in the joint that you are putting them into Anything to add on that, Lucy? There are other treatments available which um, work body-wide. Um, so if you want a more body-wide approach, then worth talking to your vet about those treatments available. Would you say low-level schooling is okay for a horse with severe arthritis who shows no sign apart from stiffness and lameness? Um, so it depends on the degree of lameness. I would get your vet to come and trip them up and watch them move before making any decisions on that. Are there safe supplements for an arthritic mare who's in foal? Um, so I would certainly have a look. At, well, I would certainly contact your vet with whichever supplements you're looking to use. I, um, I wouldn't want to comment, but I'm pretty sure that the um, veterinary supplements are safe, but certainly worth having a chat with your vet in terms of um, whichever ones you're using. Um, there, whilst most supplements have a very high um, level of safety, they, I would caution that some, sometimes there are different drugs, different ingredients and in supplements which can interact with drugs. So it will also depend on um, what drugs, if your mare is on any drugs or anything like that. So um, I would contact your vet and have a good chat about that before starting them on anything new. Are horses with Cushing's affected more? So horse Cushing's is such a multi um fasted disease it can certainly have different effects in different areas um arthritis potentially i mean certainly sort of laminitis and everything like that will go hand in hand with it um and that can certainly cause different weight weights being fed through different areas in the body then predisposed to arthritis so it's difficult to say whether or not they are affected more directly because of the cushings or whether just because of um, sort of different ways of loading the body and everything as a result of having had it um, and yeah having different fat pads and everything like that so um, I wouldn't say necessarily um, at all but certainly we will see horses with Cushing's that also struggle with their arthritis as well but that's also possibly just an age thing. Mm. 
Um, I know steroids can be dangerous for horses prone to laminitis. If stem cells aren't deemed appropriate either, what other options are available? Um, so as we talked about, so there are these hydrogel options, they um, are not steroids, so um, may be appropriate. And there's other sort of body-wise systemic options as well, which might be more appropriate for horses with um, that are prone to laminitis. So um, there are various treatments available. So it's certainly not the end of the line if your horse is prone to laminitis and can't have steroids and if they couldn't have stem cells if it wasn't an option. Yeah, um, but stem cells are, are safe for, yeah. for horses with laminitis. Absolutely. Can you use stem cell treatment in chronic cases or only in early phase? What do you think about neuro neurotomy as a treatment for the pain? Um, so I think the real question is what else is going on in that joint? Um, sort of as we've, we've discussed, really, it is a matter of um, if there's lots of other significant changes, stem cells might not be sufficient in terms of um, treating. You might just, if you're going to inject these stem cells, you need to know that there's not something else going on, which is going to perpetuate the issue. Um, but certainly it could potentially be, be an option depending on what's going on inside the joint. Um, primarily, um, I've really only used it in the early phase. Um, I don't know, Juliet, in terms of what's been available in terms of the data. Um, need to look into that. Um, and in terms of neurectomies, um, certainly it's a case by case basis, depending on how essential it is um, to deal with the pain. But um, yeah, that's a mm. con conversation to have with your vet. Yeah, I think generally it's the more mild to moderate arthritis, but certainly, as you say, it's, it's a conversation with the vet with regards to, to other cases. Which activities are likely to cause more problems with arthritis, e.g. schooling, jumping, etc.? Um, so it's, it's not so much which activities, it's sort of each activity will cause arthritis in different places. Um, so some horses will be more prone to arthritis in hocks. As I said, race horses are more prone to arthritis in their knees. Um, so um, it really, uh, there's no activity which is going to be 100% safe, but obviously um, lower grade activities, so just dental hacking, schooling and things like that are less likely to cause arthritis in a lot of situations. However, they also come with their own set of issues in terms of those horses tend to um, keep the weight off less well because they're doing less exercise and those kind of things. So everything's a balance. Can stem cell treatment be used for joints that aren't to do with the legs? So it can be used in the stifle. Um, we've spoken about the use, um, you know, that hasn't been used so far with, with facet joints. Anything else to add on that, Lucy? I think we've, yeah, pretty much covered that question, haven't we? Yeah. Um, my horse had an injury while he was in foal and his ankle healed. The vet said a few months ago that there was a risk of arthritis through some time of work. Does it make sense to give glucosamine before lameness and arthritis occur? Again, I think we've spoken about yeah. supplements being used and that sort of yeah. to helping prevent arthritis. Is there a potential for suspensory ligament damage in a hind limb to consider stem cell treatment or is this a completely different subject? I, yeah, I think that's more of a different subject. Yeah, the yeah. so stem cells yeah. that we're talking about this evening aren't licensed for use with tendon and ligament damage. Um, so... Uh, what kind of exercise would you recommend for horses with severe hock arthritis? Um, so again, without knowing your horse, without knowing exactly what they're doing, it's really difficult to comment on that. Um, I mean, generally, gen low grade gentle exercise is ben better for horses with arthritis because it keeps them moving. Um, however, it depends on their degree of pain in terms of how much they're going to be able to tolerate. Uh, what do you think of magnetic therapy? Um, I think it does no harm if you if you if you like it and feel it works for your horse, then that's absolutely fine. Uh, do we use stem cells for human arthritis? Um, to some extent, um, you know, in the human field, it would be used from um, you know your own cells, so the the um, autologous route. The, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't have donor stem cells for, for the human side of things for, for obvious reasons. Um, but also there's been a lot more research done into horses because, you know, if, if, a, if a horse breaks their leg, it's not as easy for them to rest. You can't 
do knee replacements and things. So, you know, the options for treatment with, with human arthritis are, are much wider. Anything to add, Lucy? Yeah. Um, is Equiox safe to use long term? Um, so Equiox, I believe, is a fibrocoxib um, based medication, which I don't have a huge amount of experience with, to be honest. It's not something I use on a day to day basis. Um, generally be going for other non steroidals. Um, so I wouldn't want to comment on that. Best to talk to your vet. Yeah. And we've got a question about physio sessions. Can they help horses with arthritis? And we've already we've already spoken about benefit of physio. Um, have you heard of any success with indiba therapy? Um, again, best to talk to someone who knows more about it. Uh, do horses have arthritis in the form of disorders or autoimmune response, rheumatoid arthritis in humans, for example? And how well would it work on those types? Um, so it's not so much the, I mean, certainly rheumatoid arthritis isn't really something that we tend to encounter so much, in, well, encounter in horses. So um, I think that um, it's not really able to respond to that quite as thoroughly as <laughs> you might want. Um, I don't uh, don't believe it's really something that we encounter too frequently. Uh, can you recommend a supplement that has chondroitin and glucosamine in it? Again, we've said, you know, that any supplement that is sold by your veterinary practice with those in would be, you know, ones that would be recommended and, um, you know, most likely to have the, the correct amounts of the those ingredients in to actually do something. Uh, what kind of exercise would you recommend for horses with severe hock arthritis? Um, again, I think we've sort of answered yeah. this question, yeah. Uh, is it okay to lightly ride a horse that has osteoarthritis? Um, again, it's really case by case dependent, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, dependent on how comfortable they are. So I get your vet to evaluate them and then make that decision. Uh, I've heard lots of talk about cartrophen intramuscular. Would this be more beneficial for those horses who are stiff all over? As you said, as you said stem cell therapy would be mostly for the limbs. Um, certainly, cartrophen has its benefits in terms of the fact that it's a systemic treatment. So if you've got generalised stiffness or a multitude of different sites causing pain, then it can be beneficial. Um, so it depends on whether or not there's a targeted area that needs treatment, which is causing the generalised stiffness or whether it really is just a generalised issue. Um, so, yeah, again, it's a, it's a useful systemic treatment. There are others available as well. And excess sugars in the diet add to arthritis discomfort? I mean, excess sugar in horses' diet is um, an ongoing issue and certainly yes, really closely linked to laminitis. So we know that excess sugar causes an increase of insulin and then causes laminitis in horses. Now, any horse that's going to suffer from laminitis or has, that has excess weight or anything like that is going to struggle more with their arthritis if they're suffering from it. So um, I would be always inclined to be controlling sugar in your diet, whether or not they have arthritis. Is it better to keep an arthritic horse in light work and out 24 seven rather than being stabled overnight? Again, horse by horse basis. Um, so generally they do do better um, overall um, if they're kept out, but that is quite a sweeping statement in terms of sort of overall. Um, so it's really dependent on whether you're, how your horse responds. Um, in all honesty, that really is sort of a matter of assessing how they do in a stable overnight. They're coming out really stiff um, in the morning, then potentially it would be better if they're able to do some light moving around. But if it's going to put lots of strain on them being out 24 seven, then they might be better with some rest periods. And what symptoms have you seen specifically with cervical OA and have these cleared up with steroids? And how often do you come across this in your caseload? Um, so a lot of time with neck stiffness, well, neck stiffness, you find that horses don't want to reach down to the ground to eat um, and move around particularly easily from that perspective. Um, sometimes they can, it can cause sort of just generalised stiffness, not wanting to go forward um, and equally sort of um, potentially some levels of ataxia, so wobbliness and that kind of thing, depending on its severity. Um, sometimes it's clear that with steroids, sometimes it needs more targeted treatment. And um, unfortunately, we do come across cervical osteoarthritis relatively frequently within our caseload. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you all very much for your questions. I do hope that we've um, managed to answer those. Um, for a lot of those questions, they were quite specific to your um, to your horse and your case, which obviously, um, you know, we don't know enough about. So um, it wasn't that we were purposely being vague, but obviously please do contact your vet um, specifically about your horse to, to um, you know, really get more um, information and help for your horse specifically. Um, so I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everybody very much for attending this evening. Please do, as I said, just take um, a couple of minutes uh, just to complete the survey that will pop up on your screen um, when the webinar closes. We'd be very um, appreciative of that. And I'll hand over just to, to Lucy to, to close the evening. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much to everyone for attending. Oh yeah, as um, Juliet said, I hope that's been helpful. Again, any specific questions do, um, if you're one of our clients, please do contact us. Um, and if otherwise, just give your vet a call and have a good chat. Um, hopefully it will stimulate some interesting conversations with your vets. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks so much.